Hi everyone and happy Christmas. We're doing number 24 today from Johanna Basford's Inky Advent Calendar. The very last day is Christmassy, very exciting. And what I'm going to do is show you how I colour a fluffy stocking and we will obviously do all the other goodies as well. So to start with I'm going to start off by doing the stocking. I'm going to use this red, it's number 29 from the Stedler Ergosofts. Now I'm going to colour it all over in red. I'm not going to um, worry about the um, patterning on this stocking because I'm going to show you how I make a stocking look really woolly and patterned. So we need a big area of one colour to really demonstrate this. So I want a nice even colour of red. But this actually isn't going to show because we're going to use some pen. Which is not, I don't use pen that often, but sometimes I do. I'm also going to do this top bit fluffy as well. We may end up obscuring the number, which I don't usually like to do on these pictures, but never mind. So I'm going to go now. Before I do the fluffy bit, I've just thought about the fact that we've got this ribbon going behind, and we'll want to draw the fluffy bits coming over the guidelines you know, the, this edge line, so we need to colour the ribbon in first and then we might, because we're going to use a pen, it'll go over the top. So, uh, okay, so there's the stocking done. It's quite rough and ready, doesn't matter. So the ribbon, I haven't really thought about what colour to do. We also need to do this present and this clown before we do the white. Maybe we'll leave the white for a bit though. Ribbon green. It's Christmas. Got to have Christmas red and green colours. So number five. I'm going to just start by doing a light even coverage. I'm taking more care than I did with the stocking because this is obviously is going to be the final thing it is going to show. So I'm just going a little bit more gently. I'm going to do the whole thing in this same colour and then I'm going to um, sorry, in the same um, hardness, tone, I'm not sure, and then we'll add some shading at the end, not right at the end, just when I finished, Ooh, do that bit, I'm doing that bit now because I only just spotted it, there's always a chance I might forget to do it all together, which might look a little odd, I very often forget little bits and pieces though. It's when I, I also, I found it really funny, I did a flip through fairly recently of Secret Garden, I finished Secret Garden and it was my second copy, so I did a flip through comparison of my first and second copy to see how my colouring had changed. I'm going to do a darker bit here and um, I noticed that in my very first book there was a little butterfly or something that I'd missed and of course I didn't want to go back and colour it now because I haven't I think I finished that book in 2015 so I'm going to do a little bit darker here I didn't want to sort of change it it's that I sort of feel like my older pictures are like a little history of how I was colouring at the time and I don't want to change them now I want to sort of redo the, the page completely and uh, see see how my style is changed and things like that. So as you can see on some areas I'm just choosing to go a little bit harder, do small layers of colour to add some texture, shade, shadow into the picture. So I'm choosing to do a darker bit near the objects because I feel that's where there would be some shadow. And you also have to think about, imagine this is a shiny silk ribbon and think about where it's bending and where the light would catch. That's how you can sort of decide. And don't be too, you don't have to be too strict about thinking about where the light's coming from, that sort of thing. And that, you know, obviously that matters when you're doing sort of certain types of art, but this is just a little fun page. It's not going to go up on a gallery wall, so just keep it nice and simple and fun. Fun is key, I always think. There we go. 
Okay, I put that down for now. I think that's okay. Now we're going to go in for the red. Now I'm using a, I think a fine liner is really necessary for this because it's such a small one. This is the Stedler Tripless Fine Liner. It just happens to be the only fine liner pen I own. So um, that's why I've chosen it really. I'm just going to go over the whole thing with little lines. I'm actually going to try not to go over the white bit. That's going to come in this direction. Now, you may not really be able to see them that much, but they're gonna, some of them are going to overlap like that. Make it look fluffy. Keep them quite small. Because I think, you know, it could be um, a mohair knitted stocking. That's a really fluffy wool. I find it really itchy, I can't wear it, but uh, that's what it could be. Okay, now I feel like we need a bit of a darker colour in here. And I want to do some black, but I'm not going to do pen for the black. I might do grey because it's a bit less severe. And I'm going to use the number 8, but I'm going to sharpen it so it's really, really sharp. So I'm going to use my Derwent. Oh, I don't know if you can see that. Derwent. Um, it's got a handle. It makes a nasty noise if you don't like pencil sharpening, grinding noises. Close your ears. Yeah, I think that's quite sharp. So now I'm going to add a few lines of this around this well and hopefully it will just darken it up a little bit <sighs> a bit of white something here you can see more of the texture coming through because it's a darker colour you could do black, but it's quite severe. And something you could have done, I could have done, was to white out the pattern a bit more first, so it wasn't so obvious. But I find working on top of white pen can be quite tricky. It doesn't always work. I can't always get the pen to... S Sometimes I can press on it and it just flattens the white pen on the line and it goes really well. Other times it scrapes it off or it, the pen won't write on it. It can be real hit and miss even when I always use the same brand. So another reason for perhaps not trying it today. There we go. Now I'm thinking a few little bits of white might excite that up a bit but I'm a bit concerned that it might look too much like the top if I do that. So for the beginning of the top, I use a grey, I use number 80, and I'm just going to do a light layer all through. Now I realise this is going to be white, not grey, but the white needs to show up, so it needs something underneath it, so that we can see that it's white fluff. So that's why we put the grey down. And then what I also do is do some lines of grey like we did on the bottom there just fine lines I can I realize I need to do these toys before we get too much further on I'm just going to go all over the 24 I don't think I can miss it out it's a little bit strange otherwise so there we go now presents and toys now are we going to stick to a colour scheme or make them just bright and colourful? I think probably just bright and colourful. I'm going to start with the candy cane because I know what colour that's going to be. Number 29, it's the same colour as the stocking. So I'm going to leave that one white and then do that one red. And then we haven't got red right next to red. If we're going for a sort of mix of colour, I think that is better. Now I'm just going to do quite a hard solid red here, there isn't a lot of space and I'm going to embellish it with some white pen after rather than shading it up. 
probably I might change my mind there we go now I've got a lot of green and red now so I think everything else needs to be different colors so I'm going to go for blue this is number 63 and I'm going to do this present here I'm going to do the wrapping paper in this lighter blue and then different shades of blue through it keep it all blue so it's quite so there's some consistency in it but then I think about if I was wrapping a present how would I do it and with the ribbons I would either do them a bit darker than the colour that the um, paper is or a contrasting one but I think we'll make these match it's very um, posh isn't it having ribbons and bows on a present that's in a stocking I have to admit that when I wrap up, when I unwrap stocking presents, the paper has never got bows on. I don't know whether you find that Father Christmas puts them on yours. I think it might depend. So I think some people's are done a little bit differently to others. Maybe it depends how quickly they're wrapped up. This is number 30. I'm going to do light blue spots. So I wonder whether if the elves wrap them up quite close to Christmas, they do do that bit there. They don't have a lot of time to, uh, to um, wrap them but if they um, if they have a bit more time and they've got the presents made or bought nearer to Christmas and um, further away from Christmas maybe then they have time to make pretty bows. It's number three and I'm going to do the ribbon. I remember always thinking that my stocking was the most exciting part of Christmas. I think it was because I used to wake up really early in the morning, probably about 2-3 o'clock, and Father Christmas would have been, my stocking's there by the bed, and I can, or on my feet, depends, sometimes he left it on my feet, sometimes it was just on the floor by my bed, and I could feel it and I would sometimes be really naughty and I would grab it and I would start touching the present that was on the top trying to guess what it was getting more and more excited so much fun and I know that my children wake up really early as well they're always very excited right that's done now this toy now I think he's wooden, so I'm going to try and replicate a wood colour on his face and his arms. So I'm using the number 43, sorry that was very blurred for you I think, to start with. Down here and here. There he is. And then I'm going to go over that in a number... 49. I remember always wondering how far the Christmas was going to come to our house because our fireplace was all sealed in but he always managed. I still don't know how but he always managed to come. Now the clothing of the toy. My arm wants to reach towards red but we can't do that. So I'm going to go for orange. So I'm going to use this quite vibrant number four and see what it looks like. I might think it's too brash, but we'll see. But my parents used to make, didn't used to let me get up on Christmas Day until it was eight o'clock, I think. Whereas mine usually up at, at least five at the latest. Latest. So, uh, but we do tend to get up at six anyway. So we're sort of early, we are early risers. I'm going to take this darker orange to do the details. So the, uh, the bobble and the rim and the buttons. But I have to decide this year what time to, uh, to let them get up. Now we haven't got any yellow, so I think we're going to do this present in a yellow. 
find yellow quite tricky to see whether I've covered it or when I'm colouring, but I'll have a go. So I'm going to use this very pale yellow, this is number 10, to start with for the wrapping paper. And I'm just going to hope that I've covered it all because I can't see. I think it's partly because my lamp reflects off the paper, so it's tricky to see. slightly darker yellow, the number one for the ribbons. I hope that I've covered all of that. And I'm going to use the even darker yellow, which is the number 11, to add in a little bit of dark sh shadow here. Hopefully that can be seen. I can see a little bit, just warms it up as well. I don't know if that's going to be visible. There we go. And now we've got the last present. I'm going to do it purple because um, it's pretty much the only colour we've got left. And I'm going to do a dark purple paper. Oh, gosh, I thought my pencils were going to fall off on the floor then. They moved. They're right on, near the edge of my desk. I haven't got much room. By the time I've got a tripod and, a, and what I'm colouring, I've got another set of pencils open beside me. I always have my polychromos out on my desk because that's what I use most of all. But I do my video. These need smaller pencils, so I've got my Ergosoft out. So I'm trying to colour that fairly evenly. And that lovely little pom-pom ribbon with the lighter colour. This is number 62. Sorry, let me show that to the camera in case anyone hasn't got the sound on. It's quite hard to tell what the colours are sometimes because the camera doesn't always show them accurately. Right, and now we're going to excitedly do this last bit of the stocking. We're going to use the Sakura Jelly Roll pen and I'm just going to start drawing lines. Now this is ultra fluffy so it's going to overlap the red and the outline and the presents and the toy a little bit. I go over the edge of his hand a bit. Now I think this technique could also be used if you were trying to use some tinsel as well. Might be fun to put a few spots of silver pen in it to make it or even some glitter pen in there. Now you can't add too much white or else you obscure all the grey and then it might as well just be white. I'm going to draw in a little shine on the candy cane like that and we're going to add in any other bits. Mm, don't think so. I've got to fiddle again because I'm tempted to. So yes, that number 24 is vanished. I'm tempted to write it back in, but I might make a hash of it. I need to wait for the white to dry anyway. I think that's enough fiddling with white fluff, but hopefully you can see that looks fluffy. Yeah, I think if I write the 24 on it might spoil the effect, so I think we're going to leave that there. So I'm just having a look in the camera. I think the ribbon could have been a bit more even, but you can spend a little bit more time on it than me. Gosh, I sound like I'm in working for Blue Peter. Um, UK viewers will understand that. <laughs> but anyway, there we go. I'm going to leave it there. Actually, we need to hurry off. It's a Christmas Eve. There's always loads to do. So I hope you have a wonderful um, Christmas Eve and a very happy Christmas. I do have videos coming out all over Christmas that I've pre-recorded. Some of them are silent videos where I had to record record them in advance on days when people were here and talking and things so but there's all sorts of things uh, to watch
watch so uh, if you have got a spare moment there's still something to do but obviously it's a busy time so you can always catch up later but anyway I'll stop waffling <laughs> thank you very much for watching um, I do hope you enjoyed it have an absolutely fantastic Christmas and happy colouring <laughs>